Hello guys, welcome once more to class and my name is Dr. Dami and this is a physics class where we destroy YX physics and make it what you can do. Now this is YX physics 2016 and we shall be tackling question number 26 to 30 and we shall be removing all complexities. In this edition, I shall be teaching you something special and do you know what it is? Why do um, swimming pools behave like mirror? Have you ever seen a swimming pool before? Do you notice that if you are inside the swimming pool, it reflects? Like, what I mean is that when you are inside the swimming pool, if you look at the top of the water, you'll be seeing something that is a reflection of the under part of the swimming pool. The swimming pool mirrors or pictures the lower part. So if I look up at the, at the water from inside the swimming pool, I'll be seeing it like it is showing a reflection of the lower part of the swimming pool. It mirrors. And that shall be explained in this edition, among many other things that we shall talk about. So let's get to the video. Don't forget, if you learn something from this video, click on the like button. We have more content to show you that will better help you understand physics. Now let's get to number 26. The distance between two solid troughs on the wave is 0.4 meter. If the frequency of the source is 825 n, calculate the speed of the wave. Now, now this is just a display, um, it's an interface between frequency, wave and speed, that's velocity, and um, wavelength. Now, that, there's a formula that combines all. Do you have any idea what that formula is? Now, the formula is just this, V equals F lambda, because V is, is this frequency, um, sorry, is the wave velocity, that is the speed of wave. So, speed of wave under the topic of wave, introduction to wave we learn that the speed of wave is v equals f lambda where my f is my frequency and my lambda is my wavelength right now in the question i was given my frequency at what at 825 n so my wavelength is what 0.4 uh, meter you know distance between successive troughs or or um, successive crest is wavelength then that was 0.4 meter right now therefore my frequency is 825 n and my wavelength is 0.4 meter right now put in the two of them, plug them into the formula, and therefore my V, which is F lambda, will now become frequency 825 times my lambda, which is my wavelength, which is 0.4 meter. And that will give me 825 times 0.4, and that is 330 meter per second, which is the speed of sound. And this is the answer to the question. 330 meter per second, the speed of sound is the answer to the question. And that is it. Now let's go to the next one. Don't forget the formula V equals F lambda. It is super important. And let's go on to talk about um, the number 27. X-ray and infrared rays are both electromagnetic. Which common properties do the wave have? Both waves, A, they are longitudinal, B, have the same frequency, C, have the same wavelength, D, travel at the same speed in a medium. Do you have any idea which one might be right? Now as actually, they are not longitudinal sorry they are not longitudinal they are not longitudinal the reason is because they are electromagnetic wave the first thing you must know is that what is electromagnetic wave is a wave that travels through vacuum or nothing it does not use a material medium this um the electromagnetic wave are six and they are given by the formula revox g red um re is my radio wave I is infrared, V is visible light, U is my ultraviolet ray, X is my X-ray, and G is my gamma ray, right? They are not longitudinal. Now, what is longitudinal wave? Longitudinal wave is a wave that travels in the same direction with its propagation, and it, they don't. They don't move in the same direction with their propagation. So that means they are not longitudinal. They are rather transverse. Transverse means they travel perpendicular to the, to the direction of propagation, and that's why they are called Traveled, like um, visible light, light is transverse because light does not travel in the same direction to its propagation. Light can travel perpendicular. Light, in fact, travels perpendicular, so it is transverse. That means it can when when you when you put off if you put off light, light doesn't travel straight. Light can spread out like this. It it can travel this way, this way, and this way. So light is not longitudinal. It is not longitudinal, it is transverse. And because light is among the um, electromagnetic waves, you can see visible light, that means all of them are also transverse waves. They can all travel 
passing vehicular damage. They are all trans transverse waves. So the first one, they are longitudinal, it's wrong. Then they have the same frequency. Now look at this drawing here. They don't have the same frequency. This is the one with the highest frequency is gamma ray. According to what I drew here, increasing frequency. The highest frequency belongs to gamma ray. Then lower one is what X-ray, lower ultraviolet, lowest and lower visible light, then lower um, infrared, then the least is radio wave. So the, if they ask you which of the um, electromagnetic wave has the highest frequency, it is gamma, followed by X-ray, then down to radio wave. But the one with the highest wavelength is radio wave. They don't also have the same wavelength. The highest wavelength is, wave, uh, is um, radio wave, down and down and down to gamma. So the least um, um, uh, wavelength is gamma ray. Gamma ray is the shortest, while radio wave is the longer. And they don't have the same frequency and they don't have the same wavelength. So option 3 and B have the same frequency is wrong. Have the same wavelength is wrong. The only correct option is D. They travel at the same speed because they are all electromagnetic. They all travel at the speed of light. That means they all travel at the same speed, right? They all travel at the same speed of light. 3 times 10 is for 8 uh, meter per second and that is the speed of light that is actually 300 million meter per second that is the speed of light and that is the speed of all the electromagnetic waves of which light is one of them and that is the answer they are the same they travel at the same speed in a vacuum let's check out number 28 now the image form on a concave mirror the the image form by a concave mirror the image form by a concave mirror um um, uh, a, um, the image formed by a concave mirror is real inverted magnified when the object is placed at where in all this kind of experiment of mirror we always begin the this is the um, object and this is its image right now you always begin to place the object behind the curvature and at this point the image will be formed at the front here magnified but if you place it on the curvature the, it will be formed if you place it behind the curvature, it will be formed in between here, magnified. If you place it on the curvature, it will be formed on under the curvature here at the same side. Then, if you place it at the front of the curvature, it will be formed here as magnified. So, it will be formed in between the curvature and the F um, as diminished. If you place it on the curvature, it will be formed under the curvature as the same side. If you place it in between the curvature and the F, then it will be formed behind the curvature as magnified. So you can only get magnified image behind, uh, 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 sorry, magnified image be and um, when you place the object in between the curvature and the focal length, and that is the answer. It has to be between the curvature and the focal, and that is the answer for that question. And that settles my number twenty-eight. Now don't forget that we will later treat that on a later video on mirror. Let's check out number twenty-nine. The total internal reflection. Total internal in reflection is a phenomenon of reflection of light occurs when the light will travel into a denser medium. Of course, when the critical angle is just exceeded, it's a phenomenon of reflection of light. Wow, my option one and four are actually the same thing. I believe that should be a typo. Now, let's check out numbers and let's check which one of them is correct. Now, total internal reflection um, occur um, when a swimming pool behaves, why a swimming pool behaves like a mirror? It's simply um, explained by total internal reflection. When you are under the swimming pool, now this is it. This is the meaning of total internal reflection. The light coming from your eyes when you are in the swimming pool goes up to the top of the pool, like what I have here. The light coming from my eyes goes up to the top of the pool and the light what? It bounces back. This is total internal reflection. It goes this way and then it bounces back. Can you see that? And then that means you will be seeing the bottom of the swimming pool um, from under the swimming pool. Like I think the total internal reflection is reflecting the, the bottom of the pool. Like if I'm here now, if I'm in the pool now, I'll be seeing, look at the lines on the, in the bottom of the pool. Can you see these lines? They are re reflecting. They are reflecting um, on top of the pool, right? It is reflected by total internal reflection. That means the ray of the light, if you are swimming, You'll be seeing the bottom of the pool reflecting back to you from the top of the pool. This is the top of the pool, and you are the one looking from here. 
you are looking at the top of the pool, you'll be seeing the bottom of the pool reflecting back to you because this is a phenomenon that explains total internal reflection. Now, let's read this now. Total internal reflection in physics completes reflection of a ray of light within a medium, such as water or glass, from the surrounding surface back into the medium. The, the phenomenon occurs if the angle of incidence is greater than a certain limiting angle called the critical angle. Now, it only happens when the angle of um, incidence exceeds the critical angle. Now, this is the angle of incidence here. This is the critical angle here. Can you see the critical angle? But this is the angle of incidence coming from here. The angle of incidence is this. The angle of incidence is greater is larger than the critical angle. Can you see the, um, the angle of incidence here? This is the critical angle here. Between here and here, this angle here is C, is my critical angle. This angle here is my angle of incidence here. The angle of incidence is the first ray, the, the first angle coming. If it exceeds the critical angle, then it will occur. So the condition for this thing to work is for the angle of incidence to exceed the critical angle. And that is part of, the, of what we have in the ocean. The worm says it's a phenomenon of reflection of light. Yes, it shows reflection, and that's what we see here. It comes this way, and then it bounces back. It reflects what is beneath, and that is true. You can see it here, complete reflection of ray of light. So it shows reflection of the under part of the water. Number two, it occurs when the light ray travel into a denser medium. That's not true. You are already in the water medium. The water is denser than air. It occurs when the light goes from air into a denser medium. That's a lie. It is in the same medium. The light you uh, that means the light is coming from your eyes in the water and it's bouncing back and it bounces back into the water again. So it is within the same medium. It's not denser medium. It's not less dense medium. It happens within the same medium. So option two is wrong. It occurs when the critical angle is just exceeded, and that is true. It was said here. You have to exceed this C, this angle C. You have to exceed that means the incident angle must exceed the critical angle, and that is a condition for total internal reflection to occur, and that is true. So the answer is therefore option one and three, and that is correct. So the answer to that question is option one and three. It is a phenomenon of reflection of light, and it occurs when the critical angle is just exceeded, and that sets us number twenty-nine. Now let's get back to the number test now. Complementary colors are those which A have the same refractive index, B have the same wavelength, C add up to produce black light, D add up to produce white light. Do you have any other which one is correct? Now, colors of light are complementary when they produce white. You know, when you combine the seven colors, um, um, um what's it called? Roig beef. Those are the seven colors of white light, like, like I, I have here. Roig beef. When I combine the seven colors, I will get white. That roig beef is red, AR is red, O is orange, and um, Y is yellow, G is green, B is blue, I is indigo, and V is violet. Those are the seven colors of rainbow, right? Now, they, when you match them on a color wheel, it will produce white. Now, but um, colors that are complementary also produce white. And those are the colors you have here. If you combine these are called primary colors, red, blue and green they are called primary colors now if they combine when they combine it will become white if you if you combine the colors these are not colors of um that you have in, in fine arts you know i'm not talking about crayon color i'm talking about light these are now you know in fine arts we were not taught that primary color are red blue and green that's not true in art you are not dealing with um the colors of light you are the, these are the colors of light not the colors of crayon or pigment they are the colors of light so the primary colors of light are red blue and green now in finance we were told that the, that the primary colors are red blue and um yellow but in light it is not true the, the primary color of light are red blue and green and the secondary color are yellow magenta and cyan okay yellow magenta and cyan now if you combine them you will get white light so Complementary colors are colors that you combine to create white light, and that is the answer to the question. They add up to produce white light, and that is my answer. So you can either create it by combining 
white and red light, blue light and green light, or magenta light and cyan and yellow. They will, they will produce white by those combinations. And that is the answer to the question. Now, don't forget, this brings us to the end of the video. Don't forget to click on like button. We have more content to send to you that will better help you understand physics. Until we see you next time, guys, take care of yourself and bye for now.